Hi everybody, this lesson is on race and ethnicity for Introduction to Sociology. I want us to look at this slide again from Coulter and focus on the top part. Skin, things like skin color variation, physical appearance such as uh, nose shape, uh, lips, hair texture, eye uh, shape, uh, height, all of these things are naturally occurring in humans. However, however, when we start to put value into these physical features, then we're talking about the social construction of race. When we start to categorize people into different boxes um, and start value, valuing the people in those groups differently, we're talking about a system of race based on a hierarchy. Um, so we want to keep that in mind as we go through these slides. Uh, first, let's go back to before this system of race was created. Uh, when it comes to physical appearance in ancient times, ancient people were not colorblind. They did, in fact, uh, notice physical appearances, physical differences. However, they did not enforce a strict hierarchical system based on race. Hippocrates, who is known as the father of modern, modern medicine, noticed that people from different climates had different uh, physical appearances. Thus, he concluded that it was physical climate, geographical differences, that resulted in different physical appearances. There was no valuation of uh, based on uh, physical appearance appearances. Um, in fact, it wasn't even until uh, the 1500s that the word race began to uh, come into kind of our, our lexicon. Um, the system based on race really didn't start to take place until the, um, the, the imperialist movement, colonialism, conquest, nation building that European countries started to engage in. European countries started to engage in this something called uh, nation building, which meant that they needed resources. They needed, in the case of Spain, additional souls for the Catholic Church. And so they went to other lands. They focused their energies on building the best weapons, the um, best uh, uh, boats with the best equipment, and they also trained men to be the most savage and the most um, driven to get the job done. And so these folks landed on lands where natives were already uh, living fairly peacefully, uh, engaging in, in their own societies, and of course created a hierarchy based on race. Um, they started to, um, when they came across the natives, um, based on their Eurocentric beliefs, they saw these individuals as uncivilized. They saw them as needing uh, father figures. Uh, they saw them as children uh, that needed to be taken care of. Uh, they all, at worst, they also saw them as savages that needed to be murdered. Uh, and so uh, slowly but surely, a system based on racial hierarchy of those who were civilized and those who were not civilized, those who are European, those who are not European, started to develop. This false ideology of white supremacy supported this system, and it continues to support our racist society today. From, the, from 1500 to the 1960s, slavery and Jim Crow were justified through white supremacy ideology. It's true that um, America was not the only country that practiced slavery. Uh, it's also true uh, that uh, at one point, uh, many people, um, regardless of their skin color, were, were also slaves. For example, you had Irish, uh, Irish who were uh, slaves as well. But eventually... Blackness and slavery became exclusive, and if you were black, you were forever a slave. In fact, your kids were forever a slave. This didn't end after slavery ended. It just took form by a different name, Jim Crow. Uh, even outside of Jim Crow, outside of slavery, uh, for, the, for the history of the U.S., opportunity has followed white Europeans. For the history of the U.S., uh, opportunity has meant exclusion of black, brown, and Asian folks. Uh, for example, after the Depression, uh, the New Deal provided benefits like Social Security, unemployment benefits, disability uh, to the U.S. population. However, this oftentimes it meant excluding non-whites. So therefore, whites receiving one form of benefits and, and uh, non-whites not having access to that. Another example of this is World War II. Vets were promised benefits in the GI Bill, I Bill, but when blacks went to try to receive these benefits, they were often denied for homes and education. 
as well as uh, Hispanic GIs. So the 1920s New Deal and the 1940s GI Bill are examples of something called white affirmative action. These are direct policies by the government, uh, cultural norms that support this, and white supremacist ideology that kind of puts all of this together that allows for opportunity to follow the white population and opportunity to avoid African Americans and other non-whites. Uh, the U.S. also has a history of selectively uh, choosing migration, mi uh, migrant patterns as, uh, as is convenient to the capitalist economy. So, for example, many Chinese men were recruited. Um, Chinese women were not allowed to come to the U.S., but Chinese men were to work on uh, various projects in the U.S., including the railroad system, which developed all sorts of wealth for people, um, except for the Chinese, of course. Uh, and after they were done with this uh, cheap source of labor, they were kicked out. Uh, further still, overall, you're not only going to see valuation of the white race based on opportunity, economic opportunity, but you're also going to see valuation based on physical appearance. And so black and brown people and Asian people are subjected to Eurocentric beauty standards, meaning they have to change their eyes shut eye shapes. They have to change their skin color. One of the most common surgeries for Asian American women is the changing of their eye shapes. Um, symptoms of racism in, uh, are can be seen in the statistics today. Poverty rates among Native Americans and African Americans are higher than those of whites and Asian Americans. And although Asian Americans um, are a minority, we see them kind of on the low end of the poverty rates. That can be explained by selective migration process that the U.S. has, selecting um, Asian Americans and, and businesses that recruit Asian, uh, Asian folks from uh, wealthy and educated countries. Um, when it comes to things like the incarceration rates, dropout rates, home ownership, racial wealth gap, income gap, and on and on, we see that symptoms of racism continue to exist today. Um, so a lot of the racism that we see today are actually just systems of this broader, uh, this, this broader system of privileges. Um, so when it comes to incarceration rates, for example, men are incarcerated at a higher rate than women, but when you split up the men into different racial groups, you can see there's a huge discrepancy between white, black, and Latino men. In fact, you have a one out of three life opportunity of ending up in jail if you are a black man. When it comes, when you split up the women, the same racial hierarchy exists as well. So we see that this racial hierarchy isn't just about who's um, preferred over the other. It has real life consequences. When it comes to types of racism, interpersonal racism refers to a person's firsthand experience of racialized discrimination. So everybody can experience interpersonal racism, including whites. Uh, whites can feel discriminated against, for example, when they're around predominantly minority people. People, uh, a white, white student, for example, can be bullied. Hate crimes do happen against white people, not as often as they do against other minorities and, and religious minorities, but they do happen. The FBI actually keeps track of them. And um, systemic racism, on the other hand, is something that happens over generations. These are policies that have been implemented throughout the history of a country like the U.S., where uh, the white European race and members associated with that population have been granted privileges that are not uh, granted and, in fact, denied systematically to others. Systemic racism is not something of the past. It's something that continues into today's societies. Our policies and practices today uh, continue to benefit whites while continue to exclude African Americans from opportunities. Um, we don't have legal segregation in housing anymore, but informal segregation still occurs. And this informal segregation is not something out of choice. It's not something that African Americans just happen to choose to live around other African Americans or other minorities. Uh, it's very clearly something that has happened systematically through policies. So when it comes to types of racism, one of the uh, types of racism that is thought to believe to exist for many people is reverse racism, that when a white person does something that they are uh, discriminated against because of their, their skin color, that whites are attacked in some form or another in our culture. However, what whites are experiencing is interpersonal racism. Uh, reverse, true reverse racism is only possible at the interpersonal level 
but not at a systemic level. In order for true reverse racism to actually happen is if we would have to uh, go back in time, convince African, Asian, and American native countries and nations to, uh, to conquer European nations and implement a system that privileges non-Europeans and also subject Europeans to non-European standards. Lastly, we'll make European countries, we would make European countries so poor that they would want to migrate out of their countries where, and live where black and brown pe people live. That's what true reverse racism would look like, but that's not what's possible at all unless we have a time machine. Let's go over some concepts that are often confused, race, ethnicity, and nationality, or REN. Race is the, exactly what we've been talking about, a system of privileges based on uh, racial classification. Uh, ethnicity, on the other, other hand, is a person's cultural background, the food that they eat, the religion that they practice, the language that they speak, the customs that they have, and the norms that they enforce within their own groups. Um, this, a lot of times, is related to the country of origin that people come from um, and is kind of uh, related to your connection to the old world. So, for example, you might be an American citizen but still practice um, uh, you know, still practice ethnicity. For example, you might still eat f eat food that uh, is customary to the con your country of origin or your family's country of origin. Nationality is your citizenship, so it's who you are a uh, what country you are a citizen uh, in, and so being a citizen obviously brings certain rights and privileges. So those three concepts are often kind of confused, so they need to be separated. When we think about biology and, and whether or not it can prove whether race is something real, the point, the the fact is it cannot. For the longest time, um, biology uh, practiced a sort of racist biology in eugenics, which was a uh, uh, now proven to be a fraudulent science that tried to um, tried to genetically breed some kind of um, supreme human, um, and particularly. Uh, eugenics focused on race and how race and how whites uh, through uh, genetic science could be shown to be the, su the supreme race. However, this was not possible. Eugenicists eventually realized that, that this, uh, this is a false science, that it, it just can't be shown that whites are, are an exclusive race of people. Of course, we know that everybody is a homo sapien. Um, you know, no one is of a different species, and so therefore eugenics uh, would just kind of fell flat on its face. Eventually, biology um, is to where we're at now, and most most geneticists even agree that race, as we know it in society, is socially constructed. The genetics in our bodies do not match up with the 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 racial groups um, in society. Uh, so to kind of prove this, we can look at these three folks and try to guess what race they are. The person on the left, some people might say that's a white person, or some people might say that's, that's clearly a black person. A person in the middle, someone might say that's a Hispanic person or an Asian person. Uh, the person on all the way on the right might say, well, that person looks white or maybe Italian or maybe Hispanic, right? Um, it's hard to tell, and that's the whole point. Biology cannot tell us, physical appearance cannot tell us what race is, only these individuals can tell us who they are based on REN, race, ethnicity, and nationality. So when we think about society and race today, we know that it's not biologically real, but obviously it still has real social outcomes. Um, we are living in 400 years of white supremacy ideology and still counting. Uh, I mentioned that Jim Crow legally was over in 1960s, but we live in a new Jim Crow era where overt racism is no longer acceptable, but subtle forms of racism are still very much practiced in today's society. One of these types of racism is colorblind racism, where a person pretends that race no longer exists. In fact, this is the popular way to teach children about race, that race no longer matters, that we should treat people not based on their skin color, uh, but on the content of their character, as Martin Luther King um, uh, philosophized, um, but at the same time we are doing some harm. By ignoring race, we're fighting ignorance with more ignorance. Instead, we should be celebrating our, our differences. Um, so when it comes to race today, colorblindness isn't necessarily helping the situation, it's perpetuating 
uh, white supremacist ideology and allowing systemic racism to persist. So that's